Hello everyone, I'm Koyun and today we are going to learn about Form 4, Chapter 4, Chemical Composition in a Cell. So this is a chapter where we learn about carbohydrate, protein, um, nucleic acid, yeah, a lot more. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this question from Selangor Set 12023. So it shows the structure of type of nucleic acid based on diagram 1.1 state the type of nucleic acid. So it's obviously known as a DNA because nucleic acid, they actually got two types, like RNA and DNA. So RNA, they are actually single-stranded. So it's very obvious that this one is a double-stranded, double helix structure. So it is a DNA. D oxy ribonucleic acid. If you are confident that you know what is the DNA, lah. but if you really cannot remember, then really no choice, you have to write out DNA and hope that they accept this answer. So yeah. Now let's continue. The next one is drawing out the structure of the nucleotide. But they want you to draw the nucleotide, the most basic unit. They don't want you to draw this whole DNA like just now the diagram. They want you to draw one basic unit which is the monomer of the nucleic acid is the nucleotide. So what does the nucleotide consist of? It actually consists of three main things. Deoxyribose sugar. Next one is a nitrogenous base. The third one is a phosphate group. So how to draw? Panic. So for the deoxyribose sugar, right? Because it is a pentose sugar. So this sugar must be a pentagon, right? It's not a uh, other type of shape, lah. Not square or hexagon. So you have to draw out a pentose sugar. With five sided. Okay, this is a pentose sugar. I know it's a bit cha cha. I'm so sorry for that. And then you have to draw out the. <laughs> Let me redraw it. Okay, so this is the pentose sugar. And then you have to label the structure, but later I will label it out. So the next. One is actually the phosphate group right here. So you have to draw a big circle. Not a big up, but yeah. This is actually the phosphate group. And the next one right here is actually your nitrogenous base. Okay, so this is a nitrogenous base. So how do you actually label it? In order to label it, you must to use a ruler. But for drawing, you cannot use ruler. So in order to label it, you have to use ruler. Okay, when you use, when you draw, you remember to use pencil to draw. Lah, okay, if you use pen, you know, sometimes you draw wrongly, then you keep canceling out. You make the whole paper very, yeah, messy. So it's better to draw using pencil. Must draw, lah, okay, basically. So it's a phosphate group. This is a nitrogenous base. Base. And the sugar is a deoxyribose sugar. If you can't think of the specific name, then you can write a pentose sugar also. Deoxyribose sugar. But if you still can remember, it's better to write the most specific one. Deoxyribose sugar. So for drawing, biological drawing, you have to keep that in mind that when you are draw, drawing, the labeling you must use straight. I mean, you must use ruler to label and try to label it at the side. Now, you cannot like, oh, you simply just uh, do, do, like that. No, you cannot. Or you cannot do it in an arrow form. No, cannot. You must use a straight line and then a ruler. Now. And drawing, use pencil. And when you draw that time, try not to draw. I mean, you try to draw it in a close way. La. You can't. Sometimes teachers are quite particular with this. And I always get deducted marks because I didn't draw properly. <laughs> okay, what does it mean by didn't draw properly? Ah? Okay, 
So sometimes students may, you know, exit out a bit right here, exit out a bit right here, and didn't really, you know, exit some points. So you have to make sure, like, don't make it too obvious lah. Because some teacher is very strict when it comes to biological drawing. So you must to draw it well lah, especially during your SPM. Try not to let the marker to deduct your marks. Because it's actually very easy to score. Okay, now let's continue for the next question. Oh, for your information lah, this one is a monomer. So how does the whole DNA structure look like? It actually looks like this. Ta -da! So you can see that this is the monomer, which is the smallest unit, the most basic unit, which is the nucleotide. Monomer of nucleic acid is nucleotide. So you can see when you zoom in, yeah, you are basically drawing one of the uh, monomer. Lah. So yeah. Basically, it joins in this way. All right, now let's continue. Explain the role of nucleic acid to organism. So what are the importance of it or the role of it? So it is the one that carry your information to pass down to the next generation. So it acts as a, as a carrier of hereditary information means you pass down to the next generation. Other than that, it is the one that determines your characteristic for the permanent So it actually determines how you will look like because <laughs> when you have the gene, it provides the genetic information for your nucleus to code so yeah, you when you have this genetic code, you know how your protein will be synthesized, and then yeah, eventually you got all these features lah. Okay, and then the next one is DNA. Also contains genetic codes. So these are the three role of nucleic acid to the organism. Now let's continue for next question. So state the match of nitrogenous base sequence of the polynucleotide after process of transcription. So yeah, you can see the sequence of nitrogenous base in polynucleotide chain. A lot of students get confused. What is transcription? What is translation? So for DNA, right? They actually contain inside the nucleus. They won't be outside, lah. Okay, and then your DNA they can't be transported out, ma. So this mRNA they are the one that transfer this information because DNA contains genetic code. So this mRNA they help. So they will help to transfer the code out. So, which means that the DNA will undergo transcription transcription to form RNA. DNA transcribed into the mRNA. Because RNA got three types, lah. mRNA, tRNA, RNA, so to be specific, it's mRNA. So, once it gets transcribed, means the DNA will pass the code to the mRNA. Because the mRNA is the only one that can pass through the nuclear envelope. I mean the yeah, nuclear pore, lah, because DNA can't go out. So, they need this mRNA to help transfer. So, this mRNA get to transfer out. So this mRNA, right, it will go to your ribosome for the yeah, translation process. Because ribosome is where the proteins are synthesized. So this mRNA will go to the ribosome there. So mRNA will be translated 
So it will be translated into the polypeptide. So polypeptide, which is the protein. Lah. Then this polypeptide is actually a long chain, a very long chain. So this chain, they will get folded, modified. So this polypeptide will eventually be transported and then go to Golgi apparatus to be packaged, modified, and then, yeah, it will either stay in the cell or be transported out like the extracellular enzyme. So this is how the whole thing works. But this question, they ask you the match, but I'm explaining to you a brief explanation. Okay, so this one, um, so sorry for that, but this one is actually A. Yeah, it gonna cover really. So this is actually from the DNA. So when you want to transcribe into your mRNA, remember the base pairing for this DNA, right? The complementary base pair is adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, right? But for RNA, their base is different. Adenine, you base pair with uracil. And then for guanine, same is still cytosine. So when adenine, okay, when they want to transfer this uh, genetic code, they want to, yeah. So it will become a uracil because adenine base pair with uracil. And thymine, it will be adenine right here. And then for guanine, it will be cytosine. Then here is guanine, cytosine, adenine, adenine. Yeah, so this one, it will become UACGAA. All right, now let's continue the next question. For this structure X, they want you to name, so they are showing you the chromosome inside the nucleus. So the X right here, yeah, it looks a bit like, yeah, they are basically pointing out the chromosome because this whole thing is a chromosome. So chromosome is structure, X. Okay, and then they want you to draw this one. Yeah, it's the same thing. You can just draw it out. Okay, they want you to draw the nucleotide. And they want you to label it. So it's also the same thing. Right? So, minus, base, phosphate. Good. So remember to use the shape to draw it out. Okay. And make sure it touched to the point. So there are two types of nucleic acid. There are DNA and RNA. So they want you to compare these two structures. So um, what are the similarities and differences between them? So you can see this table, right? Even though they didn't show you which one you have to write similarity differences, but you see the table, the one they have uh, combined together. Yeah, that one is the what the similarities. You have to write it out, and then the comparison is where you wanted to. So you write out one similarity and two differences between them. So they actually have the because both DNA and RNA, they are made out of nucleotide. Same thing. Just that the sugar is slightly different. But both are actually a general name. They have a general name called pentose sugar, right? So you can write it is consists of. Yeah, it's better for you to write both consists of. Pentose sugar, 
nitrogenous base and phosphate group. Okay, what about the other similarities if you want to give up um, another <laughs> answer? So, um, for this nucleic acid, they actually have the same elements. So, they are actually formed from C, H, O, and P. Yeah, both form from elements. Okay, why is it okay? CHO is the yeah most important one. Uh. CHO also, I mean CHO also got in for carbohydrate. Yeah, the main three elements is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and then for this nucleic acid, the reason why it has nitrogen is because of nitrogenous base. The reason why it has a phosph Phosphorus is because of the phosphate group. Yeah, so that's the reason why it has CHO and P. Okay. So how do you differentiate between them? Uh, one of it, it actually has a longer and then another is shorter. So DNA has longer chain polynucleotide chain to be specific nucleotide chain and then followed by RNA it has a shorter polynucleotide chain remember to write in full form I don't want to waste time so yeah okay meanwhile for the other one you can say that it consists of RNA consists of one polynucleotide chain. Poly means a lot, ma. Okay, nucleotide is just one basic unit. Since it has a lot, so it's polynucleotide. So this one DNA only con. I mean, consists of two polynucleotide chain. And they intertwine together to form a double helix structure. Forming double helix structure, if you still want to elaborate. Like, helix structure. Okay, these are actually two differences you can come up with. But I'm going to give you more choices so that you can actually learn more like in case. Um, for the nitrogenous base, remember that they have a different genus base of DNA is yeah, the adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine but for the RNA is different for the thymine is actually a uracil okay. and another point you can write that it actually have one type has one type but for RNA they got three types for what we learn in SPM so has three types which are mRNA rRNA ribosomal RNA and tRNA okay. So I give you more than enough. Okay, now let's take a look at Perda question. Okay. Oh yeah, they actually provided this clear picture of the DNA. So yeah, this is DNA since it has a two polynucleotide chain. 
So name the parts labeled P and Q. So Q, since this is a DNA, you, if you want to answer it specifically, it is actually a sugar, pentose sugar, which are called deoxyribose sugar. So this one is the nitrogenous base, and this one is the phosphate group. What about this P right here? Okay, they are actually joined together, forming a hydrogen bond. So this bond you have to remember is called hydrogen bond. So it's a hydrogen bond because a lot of students they didn't really know that this one got yeah specifically mentioned is actually a hydrogen bond they got mentioned it in the textbook lah. so in order to write the function of nucleic acid is actually the same thing lah. carrier of hereditary information and the determinant of characteristic these two are the main points you have to at least know of the role of nucleic acid now let's take a look. One characteristic of nucleic acid in diagram 2.1. So it is very obvious that because the structural characteristic you can see from the outside, they have a consists of two chains of polynucleotide. Two polynucleotide chain. Consists of. And then it also have a uh, nitrogenous base, which are adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, and then two chains intertwine to form double helix structure. So these are three characteristic, but you just write out one of them, you do. And then now let's see this diagram 2.2 shows processes that occur during protein synthesis. So you can see that this DNA is transcribed into mRNA, mRNA translated into polypeptide. This basically sums it all up. <laughs> so for DNA right here, effect on the protein synthesis if this transcription fails to occur. So, how are you going to explain? Okay. When there is no transcription process, the codon, which is the three set right here, three triplet code, unable to form, no codon. No translation and then no polypeptide. You just write it in the opposite way because in a normal situation, DNA transcribed into mRNA and, and then yeah, the mRNA got this codon which is used for the translation process. So yeah, codon is formed and then uh, translation can occur and then polypeptide is formed. But they said, what happens if transcription does not occur? Everything you write it in the opposite way, then win your law. Okay, so yeah, you just basically write in the opposite way, then you get your marks ready. So you don't have to panic because the, the, the diagram already guided you a lot already. So you can write um, no cordon form or you can write no mRNA form or mRNA form. no translation or you can write translation do not occur so if no translation then there is no synthesize of the polypeptide chain so polypeptide chain is not synthesized 
which means there is no protein synthesis in another way round if you want to explain. Okay. So these are three marks you can get easily, but this one only got two marks left, so yeah. Okay, so now let's continue for this. It's also about the nucleic acid. So you know how important it is to at least know this topic, lah, okay, this subtopic. It may have a higher possibility to come out since it keeps repeating uh, the frequency of it asking. So P is actually nitrogenous base, Q is the pentose sugar. Okay, but if you wonder, can I actually answer it in deoxyribose sugar or ribose sugar? Actually, for this one, they didn't mention it is from a DNA or it is from a RNA. Because both DNA and RNA, they have the same, because they are both nucleic acid. Ma. So their monomer is also a nucleotide. So this monomer nucleotide. So you have to write it a general form. It is a pentose sugar. You can't write too specific. It is a deoxy ribose sugar or ribose sugar. They will probably not accept your answer lah, because they didn't provide you that this from a DNA or this from an RNA. So you write the most general term, pentose sugar. So what are the importance of nucleic acid? So this one is very obvious from just now. Okay, so basically carrier of hereditary information. Wait, so sorry for that. <laughs> okay, so basically this three lah. So you have to put that in mind in case it really asks the importances. And uh, you can also add on uh, for the synthesis of protein. Uh. Because once you have this genetic code, right? Okay. You have this genetic code. And then, yeah. The triplet code from the DNA will be trans, uh, translated to mRNA, which is the codon. And then this codon, yeah, the mRNA will be transported out to the nucleus and then go to the ribosome for the synthesis of protein where the translation process occurred. So you need to have this genetic code for the protein synthesis to occur. So it's also important for protein synthesis. Or you can write it as polypeptide synthesis. Yeah, the DNA you contains DNA because just now the question is specifically DNA. So this one, this diagram they didn't mention is it DNA or RNA. So it contains genetic codes carried by nitrogenous base. Moving on, for this is also, it's talking about they modified the nucleotide sequence. So exposure to continuous X-ray causes change in the original nucleotide sequence. It's basically mutation occur. La. So as shown, so basically base mutation occur la, because the nitrogenous base changes at which part? Oh, yeah. For the cytosine, replace with the thymine. So what is the effect of this nucleotide sequence change? So what is this condition overall? You have to mention it. It's actually a type of mutation, right? But mutation, they divided into two. It can be a base mutation. I mean, it's a gene mutation, basically. But yeah, got base mutation or chromosomal mutation. So for base mutation, to be specific, there are base substitution and then base deletion, base insertion, right? So this is actually being substituted. So this is actually a base substitution. So it, the effect of it is gene mutation occur where 
space substitution. So what happens, which is the change of genetic code. Lah. If you want to explain it in another way, change of genetic code. So what happens? It will change the protein because this DNA, right? It will be translated into the mRNA. So this mRNA right now, they have a different combination. Okay, instead you will be changed as... Oh wait, so sorry. I should start from here. Um, never mind, just either one of them. <laughs> okay, so it will most probably get changed the triple code, I mean the triple triplet of the code of DNA. Let's say this one, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, CGC for the mRNA. And then it will be translated into a specific amino acid. But now you change the T C to become T, so you become CAC. So for CAC, the translation process will still occur just that the amino acid synthesize, you become different, different amino acid. So combined with other people, other amino acid. So this amino acid that synthesize, because it is a codone, yeah, that will form one amino acid right here. So this specific amino acid will be different. So how do you explain? It will be a change. The I mean, uh, so sorry. <laughs> it was, I mean, it will synthesize a uh, different amino acid. Lah. So, different amino acid synthesize. So, the polypeptide, the whole polypeptide chain, and then maybe the protein may not be functioning. Lah. The New protein may not function, may not be functional. Okay, so let's say the amino acid synthesis is different for this part. And we actually didn't learn in detail. Lah. But I'm just going to explain to you. Actually, for the amino acid, they um the reason why when there's a change of amino acid, so the whole polynucleotide chain, they will actually like um fold to each other, yeah, and it will form a protein. Folding and twisting of the polynucleotide chain to form a protein. So because of one amino acid, it may affect the folding of the polynucleotide chain. So let's say that this one is an enzyme. Supposingly, this enzyme should shape it in this way. Means the folding has to be like, oh, the folding has to be like that. But because of one, <laughs> one amino acid that change, changes, right? It will actually change the way how they fold. It's because of the bond that happened between them. Bonds that interact between the other amino acid or this changes. When the bond changes, right? Yeah, the way they fold is different. So when the way they fold different, let's say this amino acid, so ngam, is at the active site of the enzyme. So it will cause a change to the active site of the enzyme. So when there's a change to the active site of enzyme, the enzyme may not be functional because the substrate cannot fit into it, fit into the active site. So let's say you fold it in a very weird way already. Oh. So the active site is actually changed already. So yeah, that's one of the effects. Uh, one of the examples, I'm taking enzyme to <laughs> explain it. But this is more detailed version, lah. but we didn't actually learn it much. 
Now, basically, the new protein may not be functional. Okay. Now, let's continue to the next question. So, now we are finally out from the nucleic acid. Right now, we are entering the carbohydrate part. So, this one, choose process of formation of molecule Y from two molecular structures of glucose. They mentioned it's a glucose already. So, it's obviously know that glucose, but glucose, it will become maltose. Um, to recall, uh, for the monosaccharide, there are actually glucose, galactose, and Fructose. For the disaccharide, means it forms from two monomer. Di means two. Mono means one. So it has MLS. So it is maltose, lactose, sucrose. Okay. So for this one, is glucose plus glucose form the maltose and then for lactose is glucose plus galactose form a lactose and for sucrose is girlfriend gf so glucose plus fructose this one you really have to memorize lah no choice so for this process p hey they actually one of it, it will donate the hydrogen, and then another one will donate the hydroxide. So, H plus OH, it will form hydrogen hydroxide, which is water. Okay, so, it will form water. So, it means that there will be a condensation process right here. Removal of water. This condensation process. The water is now removed because these two glucose condense into one disaccharide, which is maltose. And then, okay, if you want to say in opposite way, lah, okay, you want to break down a disaccharide to monosaccharide, you want to break down maltose to glucose glucose. So in order to break it down, you need water. So you need water to break down. Like breaking down is called lysis, but when you need water, it's called hydrolysis. Yeah. So you break down back. Yeah, you form two glucose. Okay. So based on diagram, do explain formation of molecule Y. So basically, you have to say two molecules of glucose. Because you know this is in an equation way lah, but. I mean, not equation, like they show it in the structure. So, two molecules of glucose combine. So, how can you say in the, I mean, you have to emphasize what is the process of this com combination. Through condensation process, you must mention condensation. Okay. And to form, continue like, to form. Um, maltose. And then, other than that, you can also mention it involves the removal of water molecule. Because condensation process, you can see the water molecule is removed out from this maltose. Yeah. So, involve removal of water. molecule of one water water molecule because they want you to write based on diagram so it's better to be specific of a water molecule two molecules of glucose don't you try not to like write in a not specific way like glucose combined you have to write two molecules of glucose to form yeah one maltose <laughs> yeah to form a maltose okay so write the word equation it is very easy, but you have to be careful because a lot of students will miss out one important point right here. 
lot of students stop it at here. But I know like this diagram fool you a bit lah. You have to remember about the water right here. So you have to add on water. Yeah. And this is condensation. So you have to write out the process on top of the arrow. Okay. Now let's see this one. Yeah, it's a very long article right here. Edible firms from seaweed. So they basically do research on development of edible firm based on local seaweed as a packaging material. So see this edible means it is it can be degradable, like biodegradable. For food products was conducted and then seaweed is sustainable natural resources. It's not like plastic, okay? It's not biodegradable with potential but still underutilized. Seaweed cultivation has been grown rapidly in Malaysia, especially in Sabah, which is one of the world's largest producer of seaweed with a total production of blah 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 blah. So how can this seaweed reduce negative impact on the consumer? Okay, you have to mention that it is very good to the environment because it can be degraded. So yeah, that's how it gets to reduce negative impact. Lah. So it acts as an environmentally seaweed in the firm. Lah. So the seaweed, so seaweed is the source of it. So environmentally friendly source and X as biodegradable material. Okay, if you try to think deeply, like, why is it biodegradable? Okay, the reason why it is biodegradable is because it is made out of because seaweed is a plant, it's a type of plant. So plant they are mostly made out of this polysaccharide called cellulose because plant got cell wall, obviously. So cell wall made up of cellulose. That's why it can be degraded. So compost of cellulose. This is another extra point. Okay. Okay, this question from Negri Sembilan shows polymer X in the cell wall of plant. Yeah, like what I mentioned just now. So name the polymer X. It is basically the, it's a polysaccharide. So you have to write cellulose. Cellulose. Many, many glucose combine together via condensation to form cellulose. And explain formation of polymer X. So, yeah. Is through a process of condensation. So hundreds of glucose combine to form a long molecular chain. True. You have to emphasize what is the process. Process of condensation. So, in uh, another point you can mention, always when there is a condensation process, water molecule are released. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, that's all. Now let's move on to the next one right here. This is about the Benedict's test about reducing and non-reducing sugar. So there are actually glucose, uh, galactose, uh, fructose, uh, maltose, uh, lactose. Uh. All these are actually reducing sugar. Why does it call reducing sugar? Because it can it acts as a reducing agent. Thus Benedict's solution initially it is blue in color. 
if you have done this experiment before. I hope you've done it before. Lah. And then, if you Benedict solution, no copper 2 oxide. Eh, copper 2. Not oxide, oxide. Uh, CO2 plus copper 2 ion. <laughs> okay, CO2 plus, when you become CO plus, it is a, initially CO2 plus is blue color. Ma. Once it gets reduced, because you know the oxidation number, right? Positive 1 to pos and positive 2 to positive 1. Because of this reducing sugar, it reduces it. Okay, reducing sugar acts as a reducing agent. It reduces this copper ion. So from a positive 2 to positive 1 means it's gonna reduce from minus 1. So it will reduce it to become copper copper 1 ion. So this copper 1 ion, the color is actually red in color. Yeah. Um, to be specific, this benedict solution is copper 2 sulfate and this red color is derived from this copper oxide. Yeah. So basically, how are you going to explain the result? You have to explain what you can see. What is the color change? So, um, glucose change blue color of Benedict solution. Solution. So, what is the observation you can observe? There will be a great red precipitate. So, to break with precipitate. But for the super solution, since it is a non-reducing sugar, the blue color solution, Benedict solution, remains unchanged. In the sucrose solution. Why, why, why? Because one is non reducing, one is reducing. So you expose them. Glucose is reducing sugar. And sucrose is non reducing sugar. If they give you like a locate three marks like that, then you can explain further. Lah. It can reduce, I mean, glucose can reduce copper to sulfate to copper oxide. Lah. Um, you have to better write <laughs> for SPM biology. I don't think you can write in a chemical formula. So, sulfate to copper one oxide. And one oxide, you have to emphasize the oxygen state, oxidation state. Yeah, so actually, until here is really enough lah, because since this one is just two marks. But in case if they ask further, yeah. Okay. So actually, this one came out in SPM lah. My batch 2022. So yeah. <laughs> now let's. See the last two questions. Wow, something weird. Surgical tract made of the polysaccharide. So the polysaccharide we got learned is a uh, starch glycogen. Eh, glycogen. Ah? Wait. Yeah, glycogen. <laughs> okay, starch. Okay, so for plant, right, they actually store their carbohydrate in form of starch. Meanwhile, for us animal, we store our carbohydrate in form of glycogen. And other than these two polysaccharides, we also got learn about this thing called 
chitin that involves in I mean can be used as a surgical trait. So chitin actually can be found in the exoskeleton of insects. Yeah. And it also can be found in like cracks, those things. Yeah. So the what is the advantage of surgical thread when you use a chitin? Because normally you use a normal in a normal situation you use a normal a normal thread lah, then you have to remove it later on. But this chitin since yeah it can be straight away decomposed lah. Yeah it can straight away degrade. So you don't have to remove it out. So it its advantage is chitin will decompose after sewn wound Hues. Yeah. So basically, that's it. So that's all for this chapter. And let me show you something. Yeah, so basically, for chapter 4, you have to put more focus in the nucleic acid, know how to draw them, what are the importance. And then you know how to explain what is the effect on protein synthesis if transcription fails to occur or mutation occur. And yeah, that's all for today. And then I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.